There was a record trade in the VIX on Monday. What's your take? There's been a lot of um, notice in the press uh, recently about some very large trades that are going on in the VIX complex. It's important to unpack them and, and, and sort of try to get underneath why, what the motivation is for some of these trades. First of all, some people have brought to attention um, some very large roles in the VIX futures. That is um, a total normal occurrence. Um, when you think about uh, the ETFs and ETNs that are related in the VIX complex, and I'll, I'll use VXX as a proxy here, um, v, VXX um, is a Barclays ETN. Somehow they have to hedge the risk, um, otherwise, they're, otherwise they're exposed to, to the volatility risk um, through, the, through the form of an unsecured note. Um, so what they're going to try to do is hedge that risk with, with VIX futures. Well, with VIX overall, there is no VIX. There's not. This is not like spiders, where you where you have 500 stocks that you can buy and lock them up and forget about it. Um, it's a much more complicated beast here because you have, um, you know, the VIX. It's important to remember that the VIX is an index constructed of an average volatil of volatilities on a, on a series of on a series of expirations. Um, it's a fairly complicated formula, which I, which I, I won't do verbally. It behooves you to look it up. Um, but because of that, um, the, the simplest way to hedge would be to use VIX futures, uh, the, the delta being one on futures, um, if, if you really can think of a delta um, on a derivative, on a derivative, but so there. Um, but, when we, but when you start to think about how, how would they hedge themselves, they're going to have VIX futures. Well, futures, if there's a normally sloped curve, um, and VIX has had a fairly steeply, uh, steep contango is, is the term that we would use, um, where the outer months traded higher levels than the than the current month, what that means is each time you kind of have to reload. You're buying a declining asset. You know, all things being equal, you buy it at 13 um, two months from now, and it's worth 11 currently. Well, some there's slippage there, and somebody's taking the other side of that trade. But they have to to get that many futures. They have to price at a level where somebody's willing to sell it to them. That of course then spurs all kinds of hedging throughout the complex and. And you know none of this occurs in a vacuum. It all becomes interconnected, and it all spills into related products. Um, but so that would be the one big trade that people that people noticed was was a lot of roll activity in in the VIX futures. Um, another trade that got a lot of notice was a big one by two call spread, um, where someone bought um, VIX fifteen calls and sold one VIX fifteen call for every two VIX twenty five calls they sold. Um, I think, believe it cost them about $20 million to put on the position. And in theory, if, um, if, if, the, uh, if VIX were to go to 25 by expiry, um, it, the, it's said that the, uh, that the purchaser of the spread would be, would be looking at a $263 million profit. Again, it's very important to think, why is somebody doing this trade? Um, most of these large trades that you see have to be being done by someone hedging what I would perceive as even a larger risk than the payout than they're likely to receive. Um, one trader that's gotten a lot of attention is there was a so-called, there's a so-called 50 cent guy who buys 50 cent options uh, to hedge his portfolio. And people were saying, oh, this person's speculating on a crash. And some people I know who are well plugged into the business, along with myself, felt that this was somebody hedging risks of a large equity or high yield portfolio. Uh, Business Insider, I believe, has tried to put a name uh, to the purchaser, um, and if that's the case, it's a $20 billion London hedge fund. And what my argument would be is, he's not doing this to, for the equivalent of like a, a guy going to the racetrack and putting $20 bet down on a 50 to 1 shot or 100 to 1 shot. This is a guy realizing that if there's a sort of decline that would make one of these um, out of the money call bets pay off, He's probably going to lose more than he's than he's put in on the trade. That's what a hedge is. It's to reduce your losses. And I would argue here the one by two call spread uh, is of a very similar nature. Um, it's not clear who put the trade on, but I would venture to guess it's also a very large um, fund, uh, probably hedge fund, but could be could be any number of, of types of funds. But that probably has um, a high beta portfolio. And if we see the sort of sell off that would Take the VIX above 15, you know, into the 25 range. Remember, if it's a one by two, um, the guy really doesn't start losing money until the VIX gets above like 35 or so. Um, but if if we see the tr if we see that kind of movement in the VIX, um, 
I would I would venture a guess to say that even if this guy get, makes his $263 million, it's only offsetting um, some or maybe all of the losses that he would experience on his fund. These are, these are wildly um, irresponsible bets if they're, if they're speculative. Um, they're, they're, there is a definite prudence to them if, the, if, you, if you think of them as what they would be potentially hedging. And if you do think of them as a hedge, um, you know, when you're managing that much money where a loss of that magnitude is going to hurt you, these are not that expensive ways right now with, with VIX trading, you know, at such low levels historically and, 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 and SKUs being fairly steep but not terrible. These are not expensive options to purchase and therefore one can certainly argue that they're a prudent hedge to a very large um, exposed portfolio manager.